Hey everybody, Scott Stoller here, and today I'm going to show you how to build a worm bucket. Now, I wanted to do this project for quite a while, and I did a lot of research online, and it seemed really complicated, and like there are a lot of steps that if you didn't follow, all hell would break loose, your worms would die, your garden would be bummed out, and nothing would work out right. Well, guess what? I've done two of them so far, and I found out that it's way more simple than any internet write-up will have you believe. So we're going to take you through the steps of how to set one up. Some of the reasons why me and my family wanted to do this was that we wanted to be more environmentally conscious. We didn't want to be sending organic waste to the landfill, and we thought that having an open compost bin would attract some unwelcome visitors that we already see in our neighborhood because of all the fruit trees that our neighbors have. So we thought that this way we could keep it contained, keep some of the unwanted visitors out, have some worms that would be a great learning experience for our son, and have a few opportunities to minimize that waste and benefit the garden. When we moved into this home, we had very clay-like soil that was completely depleted. The people that lived here before us, it almost seemed like they just threw their batteries, toys, whatever they weren't using anymore in the garden and just allowed it to be covered up year over year. So as we started digging, yeah, we found toys, we found broken bottles, we found batteries. Yep, batteries in our soil and we really wanted to improve that because having organic earth friendly gardening practices are something that we value highly. We feel that it keeps the family safer and the research backs that up. Now, as we know, compost in general will help bring beneficial microbes, nutrients, and improve the overall quality of soil. But the added benefit that we liked about the vermicomposting was that now we got these little helper worms going in and out of the bucket, bringing all of that goodness into the soil and aerating that clay soil. It's been about a year and we've definitely seen some improvement. And today we're gonna build worm bucket number three and we're taking you along for the ride. All right, so let's take a quick look at some of the supplies that we're gonna need. First and foremost, we're gonna need about a five gallon bucket with a gamma style lid. These ones basically snap on like your regular five gallon buckets that you get at the hardware store, but then you can screw in the top and that makes it easy to get to. That's gonna be most of your cost for this project. The five gallon bucket plus a gamma lid, it's probably gonna set you back about $20. And we got this one at Grow Generation in Oceanside on Coast Highway. We're gonna need a shovel. Obviously a little bit bigger than this one, but my son did help, so we wanted to point out his shovel. We're gonna need some worms. We're using the worms that we're pulling out of one of our other worm buckets, and you're also gonna want some food scraps. Now, to prepare the bucket, you're gonna want a cordless drill, a 3 8 drill bit, a 1 8 drill bit, a chamfer bit, a marker, and some tape aren't absolutely necessary, but they could be helpful if you need some help visually laying out your holes. So the last thing that you're gonna need to do to get ready is to dig a hole big enough for your bucket. And you don't wanna fill it all and submerge the bucket all the way to the brim. You wanna have about two inches of the top of your bucket sticking out from your hole. So what we're going to do now is start preparing the bucket. And this is where the tape and the marker could come in handy. So, like I said, we want to have some of the bucket sticking above ground just to make it easier to get the lid on and off and to find your bucket so you don't end up losing it if it gets covered with extra dirt or compost or mulch that you have in your garden. So I'm just taking one piece of tape that's put at center, wrapped around here, and they could just go and mark with three fingers. It doesn't have to be super highly specific or detailed. Three fingers works great. And then we're gonna have another one at the top. And this is how I'm, and I'm gonna use this so that I know where to drill my holes. So for the bucket itself, we're gonna use a 3 8 drill. The reason why is that this part is where the worms will be traveling in and out of the bucket to help aerate your soil and carry some of the nutrients that they've created and you know the worm castings and all that stuff out into the surrounding soil of the bucket. So again just go next to that one.
So then once we got that, we want to do a series of these all the way around the bucket. So we can take the same piece of tape, pull it out to the center so we know we're still kind of in line with everything, and then move it over to the opposite side of the bucket. Okay, so now you got a ton of holes. Should probably have just about four on the bottom. You don't want to do a lot on the bottom. You want a majority of them on the side. And the most important thing, whether than, you know, more important than the spacing, is that your highest hole is below the top of the soil level. That'll help keep other critters that you don't want out of your bucket. Now, as you can see, there's also a lot of like sharp plastic left over. So what we're going to do is use that chamfer bit and just smooth that over. And keep in mind, since the plastic's soft, it's really easy to dig into that ch and do it with the chamfer bit. So no pressure if you're not used to these bits. Just go real lightly, clean it up, and that's it. And as you can see, the inside has some really sharp bits too, so make sure you clean that up as well. Okay, so now that we got all the holes drilled, everything smoothed out for the bigger ones, we're gonna start putting on the lid. So we're gonna snap the ring in place. And you can just use a mallet or push it on really hard like I did there. And then here comes the part that makes this lid so cool. We can screw it on. Now, the last thing that we need is we do need some smaller holes, like that 1 8 bit, and we're gonna put a few of them in the lid. Now, what this does is it allows the compost bin to breathe and it allows some water to get in for the worms. So, you don't need to do 100 million of them like we just did on the outside. You can just do one in each corner here in the recess part and then one on each of the raised beams. And the reason why you want these holes smaller is that over time you will get other bugs that you're not looking for and depending where you live maybe some mice or something that want to try and get in if you have the smaller hole it's going to be a lot harder for those unwanted visitors to get into your worm bucket don't put the dirt back in the hole <laughs> All right, so here we go. We've got our bucket full of holes. We've got the lid on. We've got our hole in the dirt in the garden. So we're just gonna put that down. And as you can see, yes, there's a lot of little backfilling that we need to do, and that's what we're gonna do next. So just grab your helper if you've got one, grab your hand, and just start to smooth around the dirt that can return to the hole around it, securing the bucket into place. Just move it around. Okay, so now that you got your bucket surrounded and back filled with the dirt, you want to open up the lid and then you're going to see some of the dirt fall back in. That's totally okay. Now, we need to make a bed for it. The thought was so complicated when I read about doing this online. And it really doesn't have to be that complex. So, so take some yard scraps, throw in some weeds, some leaves, whatever organic matter you have from the yard. And we're also gonna take a chunk of some rich soil, like a soil building compost that you could buy from the nursery, and then just kind of put that down as the first layer. Then we're gonna take our worms. You wanna put our worms in, bud? Yes. 
All right, put the worms in. My worms. Worms are a little heavy today, huh? That's too heavy. Okay. Do you want to put the food scraps in? Hmm? Okay, let's get the food scraps. I'm going to put that in. Okay. It's not too heavy. And then put in your first batch of food scraps. It's all good. Yeah. So when you first start out your bucket, it's not going to be filled up all the way, although if you have enough food scraps saved up, you definitely can. Your worms are going to start to hang out in the layer with the soil and the bedding material that you made, and they're going to come up to the food and start to eat it. So once you got that done, it's really that simple. Just screw the lid back on. And then once you have some more food scraps from your kitchen, bring them over until you top it off. Now, the rate at which it composts and the rate at which the worms eat it is going to vary season to season. So during the colder months, as you can imagine, it takes a little bit longer for the material to break down. And during the summer, it may surprise you how quickly your worms go through the food that you put in there. So thanks for watching. I hope that you like this video. So I guess one of the last questions that you're probably wondering is where do you get the worms? That's a great question. There's a few options. So you can go to a local farmer's market and there's usually a worm person that's selling worm castings. Oftentimes they also have worms for sale. You can also check Craigslist. That's what I did. I found this guy named Mark that lives over in Vista. $25 later, there are some worms left on a porch. I give him the 25 bucks on the porch smooth easy nice little transaction now the cool thing about those worms is that when i picked them up they're in a box and i could just gently move the top layer of soil and see tons of happy worms now when we looked at the ones at the farmer's market it was kind of hard to find worms if you're doing something like 20 25 bucks on worms you should get about a pound or two and it should be full of worms and teeny tiny baby worms too not just Four, like the farmer's market example that we had so keep an eye on that keep in mind you're not going to see them from the surface until you break that surface because worms live under the surface and they're hiding from you so I hope you found this beneficial and helpful and I'm sure that if you try this out you'll have much happier plants in your garden and you may want to do more than one of them depending on how many people are in your household now there are a few things that you can't put in your worm bucket. Worms are basically creatures where their entire body is like a taste bud. So you can't do spicy peppers, you can't do onions, garlic, any of the alliums, or citrus. No dairy, no meat, and limited on the eggshells. When I was researching this, I saw that many people are saying that you have to harvest the worm castings that are in the bucket. I haven't had to do that. Basically, I add a little bit, maybe every couple of days to a week, depending on the season, like I was mentioning earlier. The worms start to carry that throughout the soil, the level goes down, and then we have enough kitchen scraps to top it off. So if you're squeamish and you don't really want to dig through there and like pull worms out of everything to get the worm castings to put on your plants, you don't absolutely have to do that to make this work for you. The other cool thing is, is if you have kids or family members that are really interested in this, they're gonna love to go out and feed their worms and it can actually be a fun chore like it is in our household. Also, if you have anyone that likes to go fishing, you can take those extra worms, you got built-in bait. Or if you wanna continue the process, grow more worm buckets or help your neighbors grow their own worm buckets, you'll definitely have worms to share with them. And if nothing else, you can always sprinkle them throughout your garden and have more and more happy plants. Be sure to like, subscribe, 
and comment below. Let me know what your experiences have been with composting, what you learned from this, what you like, and what questions you have. Did I leave something out that I'm not aware of? Let me know and be happy to fill you in on what I know. Thanks for watching and have a great day.